Like many dudes of my generation, I met my significant other at university. We've been together for almost a decade. I think it's a reasonably stable relationship. But there are those moments, those glints of jealousy, those moments of anxiousness in her eyes. Do they come from when I'm texting late at night? No. Do they come from when I talk about my exes? No. They come from a far deeper place when I talk about Tarn Adams and Dwarf Fortress. This is because, as I will argue, Dwarf Fortress is just not like the other games, that high school sweetheart of gaming that is not like the other girls. But to explain why is sort of complicated. If you've been recommended this video by our YouTube overlords, you've probably already played Dwarf Fortress. You've probably definitely played games like RimWorld. But I think, like me, if you've played both, there's just something different about Dwarf Fortress that makes it, uh, different. And I, I think there's several reasons for this, but let's start with the most obvious one. Mechanics. No, I don't mean game mechanics necessarily in, in the more limited sense. Dwarf Fortress has very similar game mechanics as its more modern and accessible children. By mechanics, I'm thinking about the way the game is coded. I want to start by hedging this section. I am not a C++ dev, and I do not have a degree in mathematics or much less a PhD like Tarn Adams. But this is my summary of how I think the internal game mechanics of Dwarf Fortress work. Let's compare by using another example from a game like RimWorld. Say your RimWorld base has a certain amount of value in terms of overall loot and structures. So the game directors, the AI that you select to control events, will often roll a dice, deciding the odds of an event occurring. Say your RimWorld base has a certain amount of value in terms of its overall loot and structures. The game directors have certain dice rolls or probability rolls that they take based on the overall value of the base. This is just a hard-coded feature of their AI in relation to how far you've progressed in the game. Now, this is not a criticism of RimWorld at all. This is just a very standard game design that even, you know, most reasonably competent Unity devs could put together pretty darn quickly. It's just a function of the value of the fortress and what event pool each AI has available. Dwarf Fortress, as I understand it, does not work like this. According to the devs, Dwarf Fortress has an entirely modular approach to the way the game's systems work. If you had to do Bayesian trees in school, I think you can begin to envisage just how unique Dwarf Fortress is designed. If you can't because, like me, you suck at math, I will try and explain in a way for people that suck at math. But first, a small personal aside. When I was a philosophy undergraduate, I attended a course called Philosophical Mechanics, which taught core concepts in philosophy, game theory, logic, and probability. Yes, they made me do math on a philosophy degree. I think I coped remarkably well with this eventuality, but I remember students, no exaggeration, running crying from the old medical theater in which we were taught when Bayes' theorem first got mentioned. So don't be afraid, my friend, just persevere onwards. What this actually means for game design, I think I can roughly explain. What this means is that for everything in Dwarf Fortress, there are nodes, and the nodes have certain properties, being drunk, being beautiful, and most importantly, being able to be processed into alcohol. Some of these nodes have more complex processes. Some of these nodes even have psychological properties and thus can interact with other nodes. For every chance that your mining dwarf will continue to haul some inert rock back to your stockpile, there's a small probability that along the way, she will spy something that reminds her of her recently deceased child. There's then a chance that this psychological aspect of her being causes her to decide to worship an evil god. After some time contemplating the pointlessness of existence, she is now ready to transcend this earthly realm through mass murder. Gripped by insanity, she strides through the corridors to your armory and grabs an axe, intent on the most vicious of crimes. But then, on her way to the armory, she sees a large block of cheese. And she also happens to really love cheese. And so, she starts thinking about cheese, rather than the pointlessness of existence and her dead children. The cheese calms her. Sure, the world may be chaotic, and she may have made some suspect choices on the religion front. 
but why kill her fellow dwarves? This is the gameplay that is possible, as I understand it, because the game is just a set of variously complex nodes with values that interact with further values that interact with further values, like a big crazy Bayesian tree. The astute amongst you who play normal games might immediately think something and go, but wait, old man Banjo, you can't balance a game around that. Well, the answer, my son, is, despite the best efforts of our Lord and Savior Tarn Adams, you can't. And this is a nice segue into the second way in which Dwarf Fortress is entirely unique. The good old slogan, losing is fun. Whereas in most games where the mechanics can be comprehended and then exploited, in Dwarf Fortress no knowledge of the core mechanics of the game can save you from the horrendous results of probability. There is always the chance that even the best, most sophisticated and skilled Dwarf Fortress player could suffer a cascade effect of horror resulting in the worst and potentially most hilarious of outcomes. The outcome where the dwarf miner doesn't see the cheese, and she kills quite a few poor dwarves resulting in societal chaos as she dies in the violent act. But you being a normal human being who plays games like a normal person, forgot to build her a tomb and bury her properly, with a nice inscription explaining her life and actions and eulogizing her tragic fate. So, she decides to return as a ghost to murder your fortress. You avoid this, you wall her off, this takes some time, but then, months later, an evil necromancer heard about her ghost from a drunken elf bard that used to hang out in your tavern. He ran into the necromancer in a nearby city. The necromancer, hearing of your persecution of this poor ghost, decides to raise an army of zombies. And now, you've got a ghost miner trapped in a wall in World War Z on the way. And you'll ask yourself, what did I do wrong? What game mechanic did I fail to engage with properly? Disclaimer, I'm not sure if this exact scenario is currently possible, but knowing Tarn, it will be one day. If you have had a, this exact scenario or a similar one, give me a play-by-play -play in the comments below, or better yet, make your own YouTube video responding to this one. It'd be really interesting to hear, because I know this can happen. It's gotta have happened to someone, especially with the way necromancer work. Anyway, back to the video. The fact that Door Fortress's modular design ensures a level of randomness over the mechanics in a way these other games do not has an interesting consequence on the difficulty and the value of losing. Let's go into a little bit of a segue here. I'm a horrific Rimworld player, and sometimes I think how bad I am at min-maxing the game's systems has on occasion affected my ability to enjoy the game at least compared to some of the masterful players I see stream on Twitch. They just look like they're having more fun than me, because they're able to exploit and enjoy the details of the game's systems better than I ever can. But this just doesn't happen to me with Dwarf Fortress. I w I'm also a very bad Dwarf Fortress player, but I never feel as if, by being bad, I'm not exploring a lot of the depth within the game's systems. I'm not quite big-brained enough to explain it, but I think the lack of interactions the player has with many of the game's systems means that I'm not in control of a lot of the systems that I may want to be. And that will go for a player of much higher skill than me as well. This means that I will end up experiencing just as much of the game as they do. This is not a criticism of RimWorld at all. RimWorld is an amazing game within its own right but it definitely feels less unique to me than the experience of playing Dwarf Fortress. If you're watching this video because you watch Krug Smash and Company, but only play RimWorld or its similar games, give Tarn your money and give Dwarf Fortress a go. The community is amazing, and there is so much on offer on YouTube in terms of tutorials. Even if you play this complex game and completely suck, it will no doubt be some of the most fun you've ever had on a PC when that first goblin horde slaughters your beloved fortress. And this gets us nicely to what I think is the final and most unique thing about Dwarf Fortress and its contribution to computer gaming. Narrative. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s like me, you'll remember as kids swapping stories of video games. I can still remember running out into the streets of suburban Georgia to find my friend James 
or was it Jimmy? Joe? Can't remember. And inform him that I had beaten Disney's Aladdin for SNES. Not a hard game by any means. I think I can regularly speedrun it in the top 150 in the world now, after a few beers. But I think it was the first time I had beaten the game start to finish. No resets, no cheats, no passwords. That impetus to share my gaming experience was so strong that half the enjoyment of beating the game was telling everyone I could about it. I think it would be too much to say the Dwarf Fortress invented the idea of sharing experiences in this way, but it certainly took them to an entirely new level of complexity, originality, and formed a community based not just around itself, but it gave birth to a whole space of narrative-focused gaming. To paraphrase Tarn Adams himself, our players are mostly Q&A testers. The real fans don't even play the game. This is, in my view, other than its unique modular design, the most unique thing about Dwarf Fortress, the community. The community in Dwarf Fortress is not entirely made of people that play the game, and if not that, at least people who rely on the experiences provided by people who play the game a hell of a lot more than they do. Dwarf Fortress is, in my opinion, one of the best games for content creators. Given its initially small audience, it still had the ability to draw in viewers that had never played the game. And with the release on Steam, that small audience is now exploding exponentially like a bad flu in 2020. My last fortress and the first one from my time on Steam was a massive and somewhat unusual success. I had strong guards, high quality weaponry, and any goblin warband that set foot anywhere nearby got swiftly cut down. So I decided to make a new fortress and leave this one to its own devices. But had I kept playing, it was only a matter of time till something bad happened. Too many battle-scarred, depressed, talented axe dwarves. A pub bursting with rowdy elves. Something bad was going to happen eventually. On my next fortress, I decided to take a slightly more difficult starting location. I would build an overground fort straddling along the side of the river. I began with a general sketch of the tunnels below and let the game play itself out while I went to grab a cup of tea, with as many dwarves set to mining as possible. Little did I notice that the river actually ran down quite a few z-axes. While my dwarves slept safe in their dorms, the last lone miner putting in his shift struck through the wall of the river, all while I was too busy listening to my podcast and sipping my tea to notice what had happened until it was too late. Rest in peace, my little friends. Dwarf Fortress plays off our desire to share stories, and its unique modular design will always make those stories just a little bit more random, a little bit more quirky, a tad more unlikely than many of its competitors. If you watched this video this far and enjoyed it, a sub would be greatly appreciated to keep my motivation up to create more content. If you think I've gotten something wrong about the points on Dwarf Fortress or its design, let me know in the comments below. Especially interested to hear from people with a background in modular probability on, and mathematics on how they suspect Tarn put the logic of this beast together. Peace.